Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, we the brothers from the Gathering of Christ Church. We'd like to thank you for uh, all your support and your love. Um, we thank the Most High to allow us to uh, went down and back. Uh, went down. We went down south. A church is established in North Carolina, and people are being baptized in the name of the, the Son, Father, and the Holy Spirit. We thank the Most High for that. Um, myself and, and Elder Zionaj. And, uh, we've been receiving uh, some letters and uh, some questions about uh, where we come from, where we get some of this understanding that the Lord has bestowed on us. First of all, we like to say, all praises be to the Most High. Okay? This is not of man. It's of the Most High. And uh, I can say personally that myself and this brother, this elder, we have been uh, operating together for a long time. Since about what, 93, 94, right? Since about 93, 94. And the Spirit have moved us to be, to finish this thing, to stay close and finish this thing to help us move and get this work going so that uh, our people can be prepared for the destruction that's coming here. But uh, we, want to, we want to show some, something very important, okay? You see a lot of Israelite groups that are popping up all over the internet and all over the place. So, for those that that are new, I see some of the younger guys. They're they're grasping to this this uh, I would say this brutish type of spirit, brutish, to try to to speak derogatory and curse people out, and and they think that it's new and it's fresh. But we're going to give them some history on where their teachings originally came from. Myself and Zionaj are witnesses because we were at one point a witness ourselves of the originators of what you see today. Whether it be uh, GMS or the other guys, these guys are just, you know, they're just followers of the original regime uh, of Israelites that came from a place called the Israeli School of UPK. All right? We'll give you some history on this school. Uh, we have went through this school, all right, and uh, until we found Christ. And um, we'll give you some history that will give you enough information to weigh whether or not you want to deal with that type of spirit. Before these groups popped up all over the place, who, who were their teachers? Uh, before there was a YouTube, uh, who were they? Okay, I'm going to go down a list here, and I'm going to show you some of the original teachers and what their agenda was, all right? And the majority of what these men taught have trickled down to the groups you see today, cursing and, and, and teaching reincarnation, holding on to the star of Moloch, not understanding that it's, it was called the Megan David by Jewish people. They hid it under the name of David because they didn't want the world to understand that this was a satanic symbol that, that ch our children of Israel were getting sacrificed under. So they hid it under Megan David. Megan David was a Rothschild. So they put the word David there because in the scriptures you have a King David. So by using David, you would think it was talking about King David, but in fact, it's Megan David. It's the highest wicked symbol on the earth. These black men, these brothers, upheld this because they seen this symbol in Russian icons, in European icons. They seen uh, the different Baphomet symbols and all that in the Russian icons when our people ruled Europe. But what they don't teach is that symbol was linked to wickedness, and our people were wicked in Russia and in Europe. So just because they held this symbol doesn't mean that this does not mean that this symbol is the symbol of our fathers. Okay? There is no symbol that represents God's people. Our spirit show and prove. Let's get back on course here. Before there was all these groups here, uh, the Israeli Church of God in Jesus Christ, uh, Israeli Church of UPK, Israeli School of UPK, Great Millstone, or whatever they may call themselves. These are the men that started it. And we're going to bring it, 
right around and we're going, we're going to make sure you understand how this goes into the reincarnation teaching. In the 70s, there was a man that his name was Alba Bivens. Okay? Now, when we were there, earlier in the, in the early 90s, here in Philadelphia, we learned, Alba Bivens, they was teaching us that Alba Bivens was Elijah or Elias in reincarnation. Now, we're going to prove and see if that's correct. So don't forget, this is how this stuff was built. This is what it was built on. They said that my Shah, may the Lord rest his soul, they said that my Shah was Moses, Daniel, and Peter in reincarnation. We're going to see if that's the case. Your Iqua, may the Lord rest his soul, your Iqua was Ariya's father. Okay? I have old tapes of him breaking down the Star of David, saying it's negative and positive, but, you know, I guess the, the true information wasn't complete when he was coming up. He was just dealing with what he could get at that time. So we don't really blame the elders for going into that because when you don't have anything, you grab onto, onto whatever you think belongs to you. So a lot of these brothers grab this Star of David in ignorance. So you had Yaiqua, then you had the brother Lahab, you may hear brothers speak about Lahab all the time, that he got money and all that, those things. He was one of the original guys in the church. Now these guys end up breaking off from Alba Bivens, who called himself Elijah, who they even taught in their school was Elijah. Then you had Yeshia, okay? He's a brother you may see with the long, curly hair sometimes. A very outspoken brother, was a good teacher. Brother Shaw. Very quiet, humble brother. Uh, very good demeanor with him. All right? But he was a part of the original seven. You had Brother Kazak, who was real well with the history. Very good. Him and Yeshaya were very good historians. And uh, I don't take anything away from uh, their study. They did a lot of good studies that helped people. Uh, Kazak. And you had Ariala. Ariala was a Gadite. All right, he was a North American Indian who ended up setting up shop in California. So if you see some of the brothers from California, you'll know that it really started with Ariala and his crew going out there. Now at one point, when we, were, when we were learning at our young age before we actually found Christ, all these guys were together. Tahar was with these guys, Every, all these guys were together. There was no split. All right? And something happened. All right? Now, First of all, there was a split, and we're going to go over the split in a second to let you know where things went. Now, I'm only bringing this out so you can have the history. I'm not making anything up. I'm not even going to add anything, all right? Now, some of you might get surprised when y'all see that brother that came to our speakings and tried to stop us while we were teaching another brother, Tazadakia. Y'all may wonder, well... How can anybody believe that a man is the Holy Spirit or the Comforter? Okay? The reason people could believe this is because these teachers that were before them set it up so that this can be taught today. They had people actually believing that this guy, Masha, was Moses. That this guy was Ariah, who is living today, who's now saying that Tazadaki is a Comforter. They were telling people that he was Daniel and John the Revelator reincarnated because he could break down scriptures. And they also said that they were waiting for the 12 disciples to be reincarnated because the scriptures said they will be reincarnated. Now why should we bring this up? Because reincarnation is a very dangerous, dangerous doctrine. It's dangerous. Alright? If you start believing you are somebody the focus comes off of you, I mean, comes off of Christ and goes on to you. Now people are looking at you like you're deep, like you're the Savior, all right? So when I know that it's common sense. If I was there, no way someone can tell me that another man is the Holy Spirit when we know who the Holy Spirit is. The scriptures say so. But if you're under some men who are caught under this sorcery or the star of Moloch, 
and they pray in the four corners, which, which is a, a ritual that comes from the Talmud. You don't know that. That's a magic trick to entrap the souls that's in the room and make them follow their leader without question. So you'll never understand what that witchcraft is unless you leave. They'll make you believe things that's not true. It's magic. All right? Let's get back. We're going to show you that it was built on a lot. We're going to show you that no way anyone that, that, were, that was spiritually inclined that know this book would have ever believed that Abba Bibbins was Elijah. Okay? We're going to prove that wrong. My Shaw. We're going to prove that, that, that he wasn't Moses. You may hear people calling Mo, 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 yeah, Mo. All right? Ariah. He, he is not Daniel or John the Revelator. And see, when you can teach this doctrine, if you make people believe this, then you can tell them to give you money and things, and they'll give you everything they have. You're going to find out that there was, there was a trick behind all this. And see, all these brothers here that I'm mentioning, before the mid-80s, they did not even follow Christ. When they got near the 90s, they started adding Christ to their doctrine when they should have just shut everything down and started from Christ. But they were trying to cover themselves, keep their reincarnation doctrine, and bring forth Jesus Christ too. At the same time, and this brother's a witness, they was also teaching that there was no hell. That souls go back to the Father and come back every third or fourth generation. We're going to show you that is a lie. Okay? And they, they, they was also teaching, all right, that Jesus Christ himself, see, this is the scary thing about teaching reincarnation. They started teaching Jesus Christ himself came here over four times. Had people believe it. Okay? So if they could teach this and make people believe that Christ was reincarnated, then they can slide themselves in the book and say they're somebody. Okay? Now, let, let's, let me show you where, how this happened, then we're going to go into the Bible. So before it was all these groups, you had the Israeli school of UPK, all right? Abba Bibbins was passed at that time. Ariah was the leader, all right? Matter of fact, I'm sorry. Mishar was the leader. They was calling him King David. But there was a split around the mid-90s, around 95, 96. They split. Because there was a thing where Mishar was getting all the glory. He had a green hat. He used to have these jewels on his cap. And everywhere he went, they would stand up. King David! And everyone had to stand up. All right? This is when they was at 1 West 125th Street, before Madison Avenue. All right? So they split. My Shah group became the House of David. All right. Ariad group became the Israeli Church of UPK. All right. Now, under this group, now Lahab already left out at that time. Under this, you had Ariad, Yeshaya Shah, and Kazakh were the four leaders. All right. And here in Philadelphia, you had Yohanna, another brother, Ralbon, Haradakia down here in Philadelphia, and a real spiritual brother, man, that I'll never forget, Brother Dawa Da. I wish I could find him in light-skinned brother. Very powerful teacher, but that's something else. He, he got the raw deal up in there <laughs> big time. Now, Israeli Church of UPK they became, right? This, these became the House of David. My shot in the passing. So then the, the GMF, the Great Millstone, and all the guys you see now are remnant of either this side, the House of David, or the Israeli Church of UPK. Now, because they were changing the doctrine so much, because they kept switching the doctrine and adding things on, that's another thing. If you're telling the truth, you don't have to change the doctrine every few years. The congregation was getting tired of this, of changing every few years. So they had to come up with a new spin to make people stay. 
So, Ariel was getting old. So the Israeli Church of UPK became the Israeli Church of God and Jesus Christ, and they upheld Tadadakia as the comfort. Now, this could not have happened. This could not have happened if these gods did not claim to be people they were not. So now you see how the reincarnation doctrine can get very dangerous. If we just stick with the scriptures and stick with Christ and be simple with Christ, then men won't lose their minds and think there's somebody they're not. Okay? Let's keep it with Christ. Now, not only did they hold the Star of David, these splinter groups that came from the Israeli school of UPK did another thing. They would deny core parts of Christ's doctrine. They would tell you, you don't have to get baptized. That the baptism was faded out. Is that correct? True. That's correct. That the baptism, even though Christ was baptized, don't get baptized. Don't deal with anything for the remission of your sins. The commandments is baptism. Read the Bible. So, so they were taking away the entrance into Christ's kingdom. Because why? Don't forget. In the early 80s, these guys did not believe in Jesus Christ. All right? So they were adding Christ as they went along. It's like, I have the doctrine and I'll fit Christ in where I want. No. You tear it all down and you start with Christ. If Christ is your foundation, when the storm comes, when the storm hits and things happen, the church will stand. If the Christ is the foundation. Christ wasn't the foundation, so what? It scattered. And they're still trying to pick up the pieces instead of dropping everything and saying, you know what? Let's just try Christ. Let's just be brothers instead of me trying to be somebody uh, from another world. Let me just be a brother so that I can love my brother and we respect each other equally. That, that would be just too simple, wouldn't it? But everyone want to be a Lord, want to be a God, want to be revered as something they're not. So let's pull out a few scriptures. And I'm just pulling this out because, you know, the regular people that see the CS teach know that we teach in the spirit of Christ. And this, this teaching real, really is not aimed towards you. But it's good because you may run into some of those videos and wonder why brothers curse women out and do all those things. They learn it from those same guys. And it's good to have an origin so that you don't waste five, six years of your life and go through two, three families and get destroyed by some wicked men before you knew exactly who they were. This gives you a chance to examine it, go through it, and uh, reason with the scriptures. Now, the first thing they said was that Abba Bibbins, which was the leader of their organization in the 80s, was a logic. And they used this scripture to say so, to say that. Let's get uh, Malachi. Malachi, the fourth chapter. Malachi 4 and 5. So was Abba Bibbins Elijah? That's the question. Let's go ahead. Was Abba Bibbins Elijah? Let's start there. Let's read Malachi 4 and 5. Read that. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. It says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, this would make people think that he would send Elijah in reincarnation. If you were teaching reincarnation. See? He's going to send another man back. Right? Well, let's see. First of all, Elijah never died. That's number one. Elijah was taken up in a cloud. So that kills that theory from the gate. All right? That he would die and come back. All right? The other thing is this. He was not talking about Elijah coming back as Elijah. He was saying that someone would come in the spirit of Elijah and will prove it. And Christ even identified who that was so that we could not think it was Abba Bivens in the 70s. Let's get that. Let's get Matthew. 
11 and 14. Let's get that. Got it? Read that. Matthews 11 and 14. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias which was for to come. Let's start up a little bit so we'll know who it is. Start at 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, they have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Go ahead. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. The kingdom of heaven, which is Israel, suffered violence, read. And the violent take it, take it by force. Go ahead. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Go ahead. And if ye will receive it. And if you will receive it, this is who? This is Elias. This is Elias, read. Which was for to come. Was for to come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Then they say, well, Christ, when Christ came, that wasn't a great and dreadful day. Yes, it was, because when Christ came and was crucified, that was the beginning of the fall of Satan. Satan's time to rule started ticking. So, John came in the same spirit of, of Elijah. Luke 1 and 16, to show you that it's not talking about him, it's talking about him coming as Elijah, but in the same spirit. Let's get it. When John would get born, would be born, his birth, it was prophesied how he would be. Let's, let's get that. Read that. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. The same as Elias did. Read. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. Even from his mother's womb. Go ahead. Talking about John. Go ahead. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their power. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. The spirit and power of Elias or Elijah. So he wasn't Elijah. He just came in that same spirit. That wasn't him being reincarnated. All right. Now. So that takes our visions out of the out of the picture with Elijah. Let's move that out because we know that's not so. All right. Then they said, "My child was Moses, David, and Peter." Who? Let's get that. One. Let's get Ezekiel thirty-seven and twenty-four and go right to it. Here's the scriptures they use to hold up a man as King David. And don't forget, all the groups that are teaching you see out there, follow this guy. Okay? Knew this guy personally and followed him as King David. You got it? Ezekiel 37 and 24. Read and, that. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Now we know that the only king will have, the only king that'll, that, that'll be on any, sitting on any throne over the kingdom when, when our kingdom is set up is Jesus Christ or Yeshua. Okay? We understand that. So this is more proof that even though the scripture says one name, we know it's not talking about the actual David. It's talking about the position that David will take. I mean that Christ will take. What position? The throne of David. Read that, that scripture again, that verse. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. That one shepherd is our Lord. So even though the scripture in the Old Testament says David, if you're looking for reincarnation, now you're looking for David to come back. See, the Pharisees and scribes were carnal. They didn't understand. That's why Christ said, y'all looking and Elias already came. They, they was looking for Elijah. The same thing today. And when you go into the Old Testament, you see David. You think that, okay, David is going to get reincarnated. No. It's talking about the position David holds, which is the throne. Who will sit on David's throne? Okay, let's get Acts 2 and 29 to show you 
the scripture of David being fulfilled. Read Acts 2 and 29, please. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his scepter is with us unto this day. Go ahead. Therefore be a prophet unto knowing that the Most High has sworn with an oath. Sworn with an oath to do what? To him that of the fruit of his loins. <laughs> Come on, huh? <laughs> Come on, huh? <laughs> you was almost dead. <laughs> Come on, bro. Stop me. Um, leave it there. We're going to stop me 30. No, no. Go to 229 again. All right. Hey, don't make me read that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but we got it. No, we can't be. Right. We got to go through it. Come on. <laughs> Ready? Take a breather real fast. Need some water, you all right? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get Acts 2 and 29. Let's do it. Come on. Men and brethren. Let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his scepter is with us unto this day. Go ahead. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that the Mosai has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up, up Yeshia to sit on his throne. He would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. So when it says that David, our king, you understand? Our shepherd would be over us. It was talking about Christ. So every every place it says that a prophet is going to come doesn't mean it's reincarnation. It's talking about the position that they held in the Old Testament. Here's more that helped that confusion. See, when you go into that ideology, you will go into the Bible looking for scriptures to condone your doctrine. Let's get Mike, uh, Micah. Before you get that, get Amos 1 and 15. So instead of them going into the scriptures looking for Christ, they was going into the scriptures looking for who they were in the Old Testament. Right. All right? When the Lord says, any man think he's something when he's nothing, he deceive himself. All of our righteousness together is a filthy rag. So when we all understand on this earth that we must repent and be baptized and come back to Christ, that humbles us. Not looking for what prophet you was in the Old Testament. Man, he's like he's teaching, he's like he got the spirit of Paul on him. No, that's the spirit of the devil. Let's go to let's go to Amos 1 and 15. And Amos 1 15. You have it, brother? Read that for me, please. And that king shall go into captivity. He and his princes together, saith the Lord. So they were saying, see, it says our king shall go into captivity and my Shah is in America with us. I heard this. No way. This is talking about our people falling in ancient Babylon and the king and all the people of the kingdom went into captivity with, his, with their people. The king fell with the rest of the people. That's what this was talking about. So they would use that King David and link it up with this and say that that's him in captivity with us, reincarnated as the leader of the Israeli school of UPK. Now, this is the part that confuses me. Not only did they say this man was David, they claim he was Moses and Peter. So I'm a little perplexed when I read this scripture. All right? Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 17 and 1. Read that. And after six days, Yeshua taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. So he took Peter with him. Now Christ took Peter with him. Now don't forget, this is my shop. Read. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Go ahead. And behold, they appeared unto them Moses and Elias. Moses and who? Moses and Elias. Moses and Elias. So this killed two things. First of all, how can this, how can Misha be Moses and Peter when they're two different places at one time? That's number one. Number two, how can John be Elijah when John was beheaded and then after this is showing Elijah? Shouldn't that be John there since he was the last person that died? Right? He was the last person that died. So it shouldn't be Elijah in the transfiguration. It should be John if he was reincarnated. You see the madness that comes with him when you teach that? So here it is. You got Peter and Moses 
in this uh, they're in the same setting with Jesus with Christ so you know that sooner or later some brothers would get envious because one man is getting all the admiration as king he's getting all the money he's getting all the admiration so sooner or later there was a split and then Ari started teaching this guy wasn't Moses. But he wasn't teaching that while he was with them. And they was at the Passover was getting all that money together. That's what it's really about, folks. Money. There's more. They claim that Jesus Christ himself, all right, came as Solomon as himself and Adam. They, they, they claimed that he was Adam. Jesus Christ was Adam, Solomon, and, and himself. And Melchizedek. First of all, if Christ is a lamb without blemish, how could, could he have been Adam? How could he be the lamb without, without blemish when it's through Adam's blemish sin came into the world? Right. So th that's just out of this world. All right? And then he used the scriptures, well, the first Adam was an earthly and the second Adam was a quickening spirit. Right. It didn't say Adam the first and Adam the first. It means Christ was bringing a new beginning. Adam had an earthy beginning, and through Christ, you will have a new spiritual beginning. So they were using a scripture that had nothing to do. Then they was they was a y'all can see that? Okay, Adam is Christ. Now I'm gonna show you a scripture they use to trick people, to make you think. Now don't forget they have to teach this so that they can bring themselves to somebody. Alright? So they had to bring Christ being reincarnated. Let's go to Matthew, the first chapter, to show you what they used. And some of them are still teaching this till this day. Alright? Let's read Matthew 1 and 1. Let's see if this is reincarnation. The read. book of the generations of Yeshua, the son of David, the son of Abraham. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, or Yeshua. The son of David, see that? That's the son of David. Who the son of David? They would say Solomon. And, and who was the son of Abraham? Isaac. He was Isaac too. See that? When really, what is, it, what is this talking about? This is talking about the generations, which is lineages. And when you look under, when you pan in down under the second verse, it shows you all the lineages. It's just letting you know that he came from the seed of these men. It doesn't mean he was Isaac and he was Solomon. He was the son of them through lineage, through the seed. Okay, y'all see that? Okay. <clears throat> even, even Christ let it be known. All right? Now, this is how they would, they would wiggle their way in there. They would say that it told you in the scriptures that the disciples would come back and be in the earth and teach the truth. So if they were the disciples, why did they step? That's number one. Let's get Matthew 19 and 27 to show you the scripture that they used to say that the disciples would be back before Christ come back. Now, I'm, and while he's getting that, I'll give you the physical definition which I have on this sheet for reincarnation. Reincarnation. The belief that one has lived before in another lifetime and that one will live again after physical death. That's what reincarnation means. All right? They tell you that Reincarnation means, or re regeneration in the scriptures mean reincarnation. 
we're going to prove to you it don't. When you go into your Strong's Concordance, it's the Greek word uh, polygonesia, which is the Greek 3824, which means spiritual renovation, specifically messianic restoration. So this is talking about them being set up when Christ come back to set, to set his Masonic kingdom up. So they teach that regeneration means reincarnation. And we'll show you that's incorrect. Get Matthew 19. And I started the 27th verse. Let me get it first here. Let's get Matthew 19 and 27. You can read it. Go ahead. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Then answered Peter and said unto Christ, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? What did Christ answer him? And Yeshua said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. In the what? In the regeneration. Let's see what the regeneration is. Read. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. The regeneration is when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. That's when he come back. That's not talking about people being reincarnated in the earth before he come. So that also kills that lie under Tazadaki and them who saying that the, the twelve, the twelve is back. The twelve apostles are back reincarnated. Read. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So when Christ come back, the twelve disciples' spirit will leave the bosom of Abraham. Their physical will be regenerated into a spiritual body as Christ was when he was uh, regenerated or resurrected. Okay? And they'll sit on thrones with their new bodies. That's talking about when Christ comes back. That's the regeneration. Regeneration does not mean reincarnation. That's another lie they were teaching. Now, here's another thing they teach to make you think reincarnation is real. Let's go to Revelation, the first chapter. Christ come back. Read that. One and seven. Revelations one and seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. So it's telling you that every eye shall see him, and who else? And them that pierced him, right? Right, and they also which pierced him. Who pierced him? The Roman Empire. It's not tough. They're saying, well, see, the man that stabbed him in his side is going to see him, so he must have been re reincarnated. It's not talking about that guy coming back and seeing Christ said, oh, I stabbed you. It's talking about the same empire that killed Christ is going to see him when he comes back, and he will judge that empire. All right? You see, don't forget, they had to teach this because in their beginning teachings, they didn't believe the truth of Christ. And they also did not believe in hell. So because they did, did not believe in hell, they came up with the theory that we must come back in reincarnation. So they based everything around that teaching. And then other groups and other spawns from them started finding the truth of Christ. And they couldn't hold on to that, to that lie anymore. And that's where the splits started coming in at. Okay? They couldn't hold on to the lies anymore. You have to examine that. Don't forget, before these brothers were being shown as false prophets, they would tell people, we have the only truth on earth. If you go anywhere else, you cannot get no truth. They would tell people that. These are the same guys that taught that there will be race wars by 1994. 
1992, what they say. The same people that taught that Christ would be back by the year 2000. Okay? They taught all this. But yet, no one, no one is going back there. They're just following these guys like these guys just came up new. And that's why we tell you younger brothers, man, y'all better examine what y'all are doing. Because y all, y all, you are slipping down a slippery slope against Christ because you're following man. The Lord says, woe be, the, be to man that, that trust in man and make him strength his arm. A man can walk, follow Christ, find that water, be baptized, change your ways. Stop speaking ill to your brother man. Stop disrespecting your sisters. It's time to be righteous and, 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 and you know, regal men. There's nothing wrong with being nice. It make you think that, that, that you, you are some type of chump if you're nice to people. You can be nice, man. You don't have to be evil to people so that they can come back to the most high. Okay? I have more. We'll show you why they taught such things. Let's get um, Micah 3 and 11. And some people might ask, well, if, if we were a part of that at one point in our life, like what happened? Well, what happened in a nutshell, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I'm glad it happened because I found Christ. That's number one. I thank the Lord because everything he's showing now is real. And I thank him for it. But uh, the key thing is, you had brothers in there that would stand up for, for brothers and sisters. That would stand against evil. And Satan don't like that. But, in, uh, but all in all, we were saved from that. We found Christ. We found that water. We found the truth. And the Holy Spirit came to show us what we have today. It took some time, but we had to drop all those lies and admit the deception and come to Christ and ask Christ to forgive us for the errors of our ways so that we can be used righteously in this end time. And that's where we are now. It end up myself and Elder Zion Nash, and we're going to do this until we can't do it no more. But we'll show you why men want to be revered as the comforter or I'm this man reincarnated or that person reincarnated. Let's get Micah 3 and 11. Read that. The heads thereof judge for reward. They judge for what? For reward. It says the heads thereof judge for reward. They be judging for money, man. If they can come out with this deep revelation, everyone will pack that place to see this new revelation. The only thing you would have to do is look at some of the Israeli Church of God and Jesus Christ footage and see how all those people packed that stadium because this dude had to make a proclamation or, or a statement that he's the comfort. He got paid that day. They divine for money. So they come up with a new spin. Once that old spin don't work anymore, okay, we can't use Moses no more. Let's use John the Revelator. Or oh, we can't use John the Revelator no more. So let's use Tazadaki as the comfort. They'll come up with a new spin and the newer generations fall for it. The newer people, they know you can't go to the, the people that are learned with that. Because we know this Bible. It can't come to us with that mess. What did Christ say? The heads thereof judge for reward. Let's go to where Christ. Let's go, let's go where it says how many times Christ came to the earth. Go to Hebrews 9 and 27. Let's follow the Bible. Let's follow the Bible. Hebrews 9 and 27. Read that. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. Now hold up, is, hold up. Now you gonna tell me the Bible is lying? The Lord says, as it, the Bible says, which is the word of God, that it's appointed unto man once to die. That's it. You get no more. You want to get born again? You must go to the water. What after? What happened after that? But after this, the judgment. After that, the judgment. Read. So, so Yeshaya was once offered to bear the sins of many. I, he was what? Once offered to bear the sins of many. I thought he was Isaac. I once thought he was offered. Adam. Huh? 
Huh? Once offered to bear the sins of many. He must have been Solomon. He what? Once offered to bear the sins of many. How could he have been Solomon when Solomon's wickedness split the kingdom? How could he be that land without blemish? He came once as a land without blemish for the sins of many. Read. So Yeshia was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. And those that look for him, he shall appear when? The second time. He'll be here the second time. That's the Bible. That's the Bible, brothers and sisters. Wake up. Don't let people try to trick you with some deep doctrine. The Lord don't make it hard for you. Men makes it hard for you. That's who makes it hard. They'll tell you, that they'll give you a new doctrine and then tell you don't follow the doctrine of Christ. That's like the Pharisees and scribes to me. Okay? If Christ says get baptized, be baptized. Don't let no man tell you otherwise. If a man tell you I've been here before, he have a demon in him. Okay? That demon been here before in another person. That's why they're able to see and do all these things and see the past. Because that demon used other hosts. They tell you in Matthew that a spirit see you clean and sweat. And he takes seven demons more powerful than himself and dwell in your being. So these spirits have been here since the beginning, since the flood they've been here. So they, they have been in other lives, the demons. So you think you're deep because you see something from the past when the only thing you, you've done is allow your body to be a host for a demonic force. That's using you, telling you you've been here before. Now you think you're a demon. No. You need someone to lay hands on you and cast the spirit out. You need to get baptized, confess your faults, and come to Christ. That's all. It's okay to say you're wrong. When I've been wrong, or, or when this brother's been wrong, or anyone that's amongst us, we don't mind saying, listen, we were wrong. Don't be too proud. You can be wrong. <laughs> be wrong but if you if you admit that and come to Christ he can use you so all these other groups is out here cursing and doing all those things and teaching false doctrines it's not like there's no hope for you the only sin that can't be forgiven is blaspheme of the Holy Spirit that's the only sin that can't be forgiven so I'm we're not gonna come down on y'all brothers and try to talk against y'all because we know you are still our brothers Okay? We love y'all. It's not like we're trying to say that y'all evil. You've just run into an evil doctrine, and some of the men that are teaching it don't want to let go the past. They're trying to relive what Mike Shaw and all those brothers did in the past. And it's time for us to walk a new road. And that road is Christ. One more scripture. Let's go to uh, Romans 11. Because they, they teach something, they say that the two-thirds are going to die, then come back reincarnated. Two-thirds of Israel that, that die will come back in the kingdom as the new children. It tell you in the kingdom, there's no marrying or giving in the marriage. Okay? So that's not so. I'm going to show you the scripture they use to try to say that. Let's go to Romans 11. And let's start at the 25th verse. Before I would have you not ignorant. Romans 11 and 25. You have it? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can you read that? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, be ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel. Blindness in part has happened unto Israel, read. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, read on. <clears throat> so all Israel shall be saved. So they say, see that? All Israel shall be saved. That's not saying that two-thirds are going to come back and die. I mean, come back and reincarnation. That's just telling you that all Israel shall be saved. Not just Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All of them. Because back then, only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi was in the land. Gad is going to be saved. Manasseh is going to be saved. Ephraim is going to be saved. Naphtali is going to be saved. Not just Judah. 
So that's what this is saying. This is this don't have anything to do with reincarnation. Okay? Last scripture to show you that even though those men did some good work, you can't say they didn't do anything at all. They did some good work. But if Christ was in it, it would have stood. And we're going to show you that. Just like some of the Pharisees did good work before Christ came. Okay? They did good work. The people respected them, went to them for sacrifices and went to them for advice. And they thought they were the people. They thought they were the prophets. But then what happened? Christ came and they did not want to accept that the one the Bible says would help them, would give them a full understanding. They did not want to, want to accept that they had to step and follow someone that was younger than them. <laughs> you understand? Oh, that's Joseph's son. Who is he? And see, and that's, that's what's wrong with even a lot of the elders that, have, that are old from the past. They don't want to, to admit that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And the Lord sends the false prophets first to condemn the lies at the end. So the first had to come. These brothers had to come so we'll know the trials of their error. So that we can follow Christ opposed to being tripped up in these doctrines of men. Okay? Last scripture. Let's get Matthew 7 and 22. Matthew 7. Let's start at 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Many people are going to say at the end, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out devils? I was out speaking. What will the Lord say? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. He's going to say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Because if you were with Christ, you would have done the things Christ did. Christ and the disciples baptized. Christ had mercy. Christ had patience. Christ was long-suffering. Those are the attributes of Christ. Yes, Christ was an austere man. But that's but but that austere was for those that were evil and wicked and didn't want to follow him. But he's merciful for those that would follow him. It seems like we just concentrate on the austere part. And in the, even in that scripture, austere, he was against the person that had the gift and used it for something wrong or didn't turn it into something productive for him like a lot of these groups are doing. Read. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. You see that? So if we do his words and build it on this rock, if we do his will, when the storm comes, it will stand. That means when people try to come with different doctrine and try to knock, knock what you're teaching down, it can't get knocked down because it's on Christ. As you can see, the doctrine these brothers was teaching and that those continue to teach have holes in it because it wasn't built on Christ. It didn't stand back then and it's not going to stand now. What verse you at? Verse 26. Read. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. So don't be a foolish man that do what? Which built his house upon the same. If we build our house on doctrines of reincarnation and all these different doctrines with holes in it, that's building your house on the same. Read. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And that's why the Israeli school of UPK fell. It fell. And you're still trying to hold it up. When the men originated it, the men that started it couldn't hold it up because it was built on a lie. It was built on sand. So you have a chance while you still have breath in you, in you to do it right. Okay? We could have kept on the wrong road, but you have a choice. So if you don't know the doctrine, shut down and get toward the doctrine and then stand back up. That's what we did. Bless you.